Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me this week. We're going to be talking about fermented dairy and how it's completely different than regular dairy. And there's a lot of history to milk. Now, many of the things of the foods that we eat have been deemed either bad or good. And I have witnessed throughout my life that many foods that we often thought were super healthy were now are being labeled very bad for you. And then a few years from now, they'll turn around and say they're good for you. I see this all the time. And what I started realizing was it's often not the food that's the problem. It's what we've done to the food. And it's what we've done to our guts. And since so many people stopped drinking dairy um, in recent years, and this is, well, it's been a while now, their bodies actually stop producing the enzyme that helps them digest it. And then you combine that with taking lots of antibiotics that kill certain strains of bacteria that we need to consume and digest these foods, and you've got all kinds of problems. You start getting food allergies. And what has happened is, that many researchers across the world have done um, a lot of research on this, and they're finding out that certain bacteria are getting killed off through either antibiotics or different chemical compounds that, that we're eating and things that we're doing with our daily lives now. They're killing off these bacteria, and they need them to digest their foods. And it's the reason for most food allergies that is occurring in alarming rates. More and more and more people are getting allergic to food when they weren't ever doing that before. Have you ever noticed that? First it was children were getting, were having all kinds of food allergies, and now it's become adults, and it used to not be the case. And um, what they're finding is that it's a lot of them are missing certain gut bacteria, and I see this all the time in my work. So many people have um, allergic reactions to food or are allergic to foods now when they weren't before, and then they restore those bacteria. And then they can eat the food again. And this happened with my daughter, which was about, oh gosh, I don't know how many years ago. Maybe 18 years ago. Um, she started having all these food allergies, but she had been taking a lot of antibiotics. This is before cultured foods. When, and we started to notice um, it, the, the food she was allergic to became more and more and more. And so, so then I started giving her cultured food at every meal. She was able to digest the food, restore the missing bacteria. And then within a uh, I think it was a year she could eat anything again. All the foods she'd been allergic to, she'd been allergic to me more. And I see this all the time in my line of work. It's one of the great things about having cultured foods. And I, I have a really good article on this called um, Healing from Food Allergies. And I'll put that link in. It's in the article. So if you go to this article um, that's connected to the podcast, you'll see all that information there. Now, pasteurization was the first thing they did to the milk back in the 1890s. It killed harmful bacteria in the milk during a time when they couldn't keep the milk safe and sanitary. The workers were, I, I think they were in a war, I can't remember what it was, but there wasn't enough workers in the dairy things and it became unsanitary. They weren't keeping it as clean and it caused a lot of problems and a lot of diseases. Um, when they pasteurized it, it got rid of the bacteria in the milk. But what occurs when milk is pasteurized is that it kills the enzyme in the milk that's needed for digestion called lactase. And lactase generally resides in the small intestines and breaks down lactose. Once lactose is broken down by lactase, it breaks it into glucose and glycotose components that are readily absorbed and used throughout the body. Pasteurization also kills vitamin C, which is naturally occurring in raw milk. Then, homogenizing the milk back in the 1920s, um, they started doing that to create a more uniform um, texture and to prevent a layer of cream forming on top of the milk, which if you ever got raw milk, you always see that cream form at the top. But what that does when they homogenize it, they spin it really, really fast and change the milk molecules into very, very tiny particles. And um, it just changes the milk dramatically. And those smaller par particles can be absorbed um, into the parts of the body that they don't belong. So it's, it's not actually a good process, um, but it's, it takes it away from its natural state where the cream rises to the top. It makes those um, fat molecules really, really tiny. 
Um, and now since that time, raw milk has kind of made a comeback uh, with farmers who help to produce very safe raw milk. I've been drinking raw milk for 22 years, um, and I've seen many health benefits. It's legal to buy food to buy raw milk in my state. Um, it's nice to be able to get in my health food store, um, and they it's great milk. We buy it all the time, and it's each state is is different depending on the laws in that state. Um, but I have a raw milk finder if you're interested, and I'll put that link in the description too. Um, there's so many health benefits to it, and it's it is produced um, very safely now. Um, there's a lot more precautions put into place, and uh, we've done it for so long that it just is a a natural part of our diet. Um, now, that being said, fermented dairy is a completely different food than regular dairy. So if you're worried about dairy and there's all these stories, you know, about how horrible it is for you, fermented dairy is not even in the same category. Um, if you worry about dairy for having trouble digesting it because of the lactose, fermented dairy is 99.9% .9 lactose-free. That's kefir. It's 99.9. .9. Yogurt is slightly less than that, depending on how long you ferment it. Like if you make the El Ruderai yogurt or the El Gasserai yogurt that's fermented for 36 hours, that's about the same as kefir because it's fermented so long, all the lactose is out of the milk. Um, because what happens is the lactose is the milk sugars, and the microbes that are fermenting the dairy use that as fuel. And then that allows them to make billions of probiotics for you and basically a lactose-free milk that you can enjoy without problems if lactose is your problem. But I have seen this so hundreds of thousands of times. People who are allergic, who can't digest lactose, have zero problem with uh, fermented dairy because it's basic. that's why you're tasting that sour tart taste. The lactose is gone. Now, fermented dairy has, um, especially like kefir, contains compounds that are being shown to be anti-inflammatory, antihypertensive, and protect up your heart, and it helps to control your blood sugar. I have personally experienced every single one of those. Um, and it has really, the reason that I continue to eat uh, kefir every day is because it, it is such a health-promoting, life-promoting food that I don't feel good when I don't drink it. It helps to keep my blood sh sugars in control, about pressure, it gives me energy, and um, you know I get billions upon billions of probiotics and enzymes that help me digest all the food that I eat with it. You will also absorb more nutrients from your food, and the speed of digestion will increase. Kefir can help increase the number of bowel movements you have, um, especially people who have constipation, and it also seems to soften the stools. I mean, that's one of the reasons my husband <laughs> drinks it all the time, is because it helps everything be regular. Now, there was a study done in Sweden at the Swedish Mammography Cohort on 61,433 women and 45,339 men. And they found that, that a high milk intake, this is just regular dairy, in both sexes was associated with a higher morality and fracture rate in men and women and higher levels of oxidative stress and inflammatory biomarkers in both groups. Now, you kind of have to look at the study. And I looked at the study and it wasn't necessarily directly related to the milk. It was hard for it to say that. But what they did find is the pattern is was not observed in the fermented dairy products. The people that had fermented dairy products appeared to have a lower risk of fractures, lower mortality, and fewer inflammatory markers. So they're not really sure whether it was the milk that was causing the problems but whatever the case, the fermented dairy lowered it. So, um, which I think is is what they have found in a lot more studies that it, um, some even more current studies. Um, it's really interesting how anti-inflammatory fermented dairy is. Now, I just got an article from somebody. Um, somebody emailed me, gave, sent me this article, and just recently, I think it was in September, the oldest woman in the world died who was 129, and Koku. Istanbulvia, I don't know if I'm saying that right, her name, um, she lived through a lot of troubled times, really had a very hard life. And uh, she lived through the Stalin regime, and she had a lot of problems that made her life very difficult. But she credits her long life to fermented milk. And many, many 
of the people who have lived to be over 100 can sue kefir. And I wrote about it in an article called Living Yo Longer on Yogurt and Kefir. And um, I'm going to link that in this article too, but I have seen this time and time again. People's lives are really enhanced and um, they last longer because of the probiotic foods that they're eating, especially yogurt and dairy uh, and kefir. And the vitamins that are in fermented milk, um, lactic acid bacteria is responsible for that. Um, it makes fermented during the fermentation problem. These microorganisms generate lots of vitamins, such as vitamin C, vitamin B, and vitamin K. And all of the vitamin C is killed when it's pasteurized. But when you make it into kefir, even if you use pasteurized milk, which is absolutely fine to make kefir because you're changing the food um, and it puts the vitamin C back into the milk and B vitamins, it supercharges your kefir. And if you really want to make even more B vitamins, folate and things like that, then I, I suggest you try second fermenting your kefir with a small piece of like lemon peel or orange peel. You just put it in the kefir and let it sit for an hour on the counter and place it in the fridge. And it gives the micros more food and it makes the, the B vitamin skyrocket. And I have that in my article too. Then you can read the sec how to second ferment your kefir. Vitamin K2 is predominantly microbial origin. The K2 is produced by gut bacteria in your large intestines. And many researchers suspect that broad um, spectrum antibiotics contribute to vitamin K2 deficiency. Now, cultured foods, it's not just for vegetarian that has it, but sauerkrauts have it, cheeses have it, and natto, which is another fabulous fermented food that I did a podcast on not too long ago, contain substantial amounts of vitamin K2. The body easily absorbs what it needs thanks to the microbes in these foods, and most people that are deficient and not getting enough vitamin K really um, see a, a very uh, great increase in vitamin K2 when they start to consume them. Now, uh, vitamin K2 is so important to the body because it reduces the risk of prostate cancer by 35% in this study, and I'll link that in the description below. It also protects against leukemia and might even be used as a treatment for leukemia in the future. Vitamin K2 may help us protect us from heart disease by reducing calcium deposits in the arteries, and some studies have even shown it can reverse um, calcification in the arteries. It also helps form strong bones, keeps the skin strong, healthy, prevents wrinkles, sagging skin, varicose veins, and it is necessary to have vitamin K2 for vitamin A to do its job, which is maintaining proper skin cell proliferation. Um, Dr. Weston Price talks extensively about the role of K2 in tooth health. Um, he was a, a dentist, and it helps to keep the teeth from ca uh, cavity free and also helps to produce the dentin that produces osteocalcin deposits into the enamel of the teeth. Brain health is improved by eating more vitamin K-rich foods, and these have been helped to sh sharpen your memory and starve up dementia in older adults. And the immune system is greatly enhanced by vitamin K2, specifically as it fights inflammation, it strengthens your immune system, it allows you to fight off pathogens better, and it's clear that vitamin K plays an essential role in, in body function. I've seen it help my family tremendously, and especially in the early days of eating cultured foods, I really saw a big improvement. We started getting less colds and flus, and people, I remember... This was interesting. I remember people were healing faster, like if they got a cut or a scratch or anything, they seemed to heal a lot faster when we started eating these foods. And I really noticed a big difference. Even in my young children, I was really surprised um, how, how well it, it helped them to heal. And the interesting thing is you need a lot of vitamin A when, you've like, when you're trying to heal from something, whether even if it's just something as simple as a scratch or something that was, you know, you've hurt yourself. Um, and vitamin K2 is necessary for vitamin A to do its job. And you need a lot of vitamin A to heal your skin, repair it. And I noticed that all everybody started healing faster once we started adding these types of foods to our diets. And it, it, it really does help the body, assist the body in doing what the body is meant to do, and that is heal you. The body's designed to heal you. That's what it's designed for. 
Um, and it has all the ability to do that, but it really depends on what you put in your body and the foods that you eat, your lifestyle, your stresses in your life. All of that is a reflection of who you are. But, you know, if, if you eat junk food, you're going to crave junk food and your body's not going to heal as well because it doesn't have the proper components that it needs to heal you and to keep your moods healthy and strong. And to, the cravings you get in your um, gut are really dependent on the food you eat. For instance, okay, so if you eat a lot of healthy foods, you're going to crave those healthy foods. And let, let's say you start eating bad. Those foods are going to start taking over in your gut, those microbes that eat those types of foods, and they're, you're going to start craving those. And then they can't fight off pathogens as well as the healthier foods that have the vitamins and minerals and the fibers in them. And so then your whole body, you're going to start to see a breakdown in the way that your body functions. Even when healing, um, how you feel, how your emotions are, all of that is generated by the amount of nutrients that your micros get and the fiber, they love fiber, and that they create to create wellness. Because remember, without good bacteria, and you are 100 trillion bacteria, that's more than 10 times the cells in your body. So they're doing everything. They're helping you digest your food. They're helping your immune system build itself up. They're making more T1 cells that fight uh, foreign invaders. They help your body to heal and repair. Um, and most of your... Um, immune system is controlled by gut bacteria, specifically bifidobacteria. And once you've got that established, if you're struggling with autoimmune diseases and immune diseases, then you probably don't have enough bifidobacteria because that's what controls it. And bifido feeds all the other bacteria. So it's a very important one to feed. We have lots of ways to do that. Lots of people are struggling with that. I'm seeing this a lot, um, that people are struggling with um, really, they're missing that gut bacteria, Bifido. And I have a great article on how to build that back up. It's very simple, very easy to do. Um, you just have a great smoothie recipe. If you just did that once a day, you know, it would really help to boost your immune system. We're seeing spectacular results with it. It's called Get Better Kefir Smoothie. We have so many people that are writing me and telling me how much better they feel since they started doing it. And um, it's, it's been a really exciting time to see how easy it is to do, how fast it works, and how efficient it is in helping you to feel better more and more of the time. So I have lots of fermented dairy recipes, and I'll put that recipe in the link description above, below so you can find it. But we have lots of fermented dairies you can try. We have kefir. We have easy kefir, or we have kefir made with live grains. You can pick the one. If you're first starting out, I recommend you do easy kefir. It's kind of what I did. And it's made from kefir grains. You're not going to get kefir grains with this. But what you're going to do, it's, it's made from flash frozen kefir grains. You just place it in the jar, put the milk in it, let it sit in your counter for 24 hours, and the next day you have kefir. And then you can use a portion of that jar to make another jar. And you can do it again and again and again, and it just goes on for a very, very long time. As long as you do it on a regular basis, it keeps working. And uh, Or you can do live kefir grains, which are grains you put in milk, and then you let it sit, and then you strain them out, and then you have kefir. Um, easy kefir is easier, especially for beginners, so I'd highly recommend that because you can do it anytime, whereas kefir grains, you do have to take care of them all the time, like every day. We also have um, lots of yogurts um, that we really highly recommend, too. They're wonderful for you, and they have a lot of benefits like kefir, but they have different benefits. There's different things in them, things like l ruteri l gasseri We have bifidobacteria, which is yogurt plus. Um, they're all fabulous. And then we also have probiotic cheeses that are so good, like chevrolet. And um, we have so many different types of way to make cheese from yogurts, like and kefir. You can make cheese from both of those. And I have a whole bunch of them. Um, I have a goat cheese recipe. I have all of those on there um, for you to see if you really like cheeses. Because cheese, there's a lot of cheeses that have more vitamin K2 than even regular uh, fermented dairy because they're aged longer and they produce more of it. Um, but they're wonderful to try and do. We even have a, a kefir butter that has a lot of vitamin K2 in it too. So um, all of these are just fermented. And I don't want you to be scared of dairy. Everybody's so freaked out by it. 
And I've been seeing this for, oh gosh, it's been a long time now. And everybody thinks it's bad because everybody's talking about it. But fermented dairy is so different. It's a completely different food. And we also have ways to do it if you don't want dairy. We have 16 non-kefir dairy recipes and we have non-dairy yogurt recipes. So if you still are worried about it, um, we have those too. And, but anyway, fermented dairy is not the big evil. It's just been changed throughout the years. They've really changed it. And our guts have changed. We don't have the, you know, the microbial diversity in our guts that we used to have, which is causing a lot of food problems and allergies. So uh, check out all the recipes uh, and check out all the different ways you can make more vitamin K2 in your body. It's super easy. I'll put the recipes below. Just start with one. Don't do a bunch all at once. Just start with one. See how you do. Kefir is the easiest one to start with. has the most benefits. It has the most probiotics, 50 plus in, you know, in one jar uh, of different types of probiotics that really, really help nourish and feed your gut. So thanks for listening, guys. And uh, try to get some fermented dairy or non-dairy, either one. They're both good for you. Um, and they both work very, very well. Um, in your diet and watch and see how your inflammation goes down, how you heal better, how you feel better um, and start taking care of those gut microbes and they'll take care of you. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time.